Hey, it's Irreverent Ages here, and welcome to another installment of the Two-Man Vet Dungeon Tanking Series, where my heterosexual life partner Kyle and I two-man every single vet dungeon so that I can show you all the tanking mechanics you're expected to know, and all the extra things you might be responsible for if you stupidly queue up for a random vet dungeon solo style. With only two people in our group, we are simulating a bad pug experience so that you can better learn all the mechanics that good groups just burn right past. This is Graven Deep, and this is the first optional boss, Mizugru. The M is silent though, I'm pretty sure, so we're just going to call him Zugi for short. Anyway, as far as tanking in goes, it's pretty standard for an optional boss. You pretty much hold aggro and you don't die. Block his heavy attacks, block his AoEs, etc. There is a mechanic where a power transmitter is summoned, and a transmitter will appear and put lightning on the boss. That'll make the boss go invulnerable. All you need to do is debuff it so that way your group can take it down faster. The invulnerability phase seems to happen on a timer, so if you get it more than once, you should probably just find some stronger friends. While he's invulnerable, Zugi will shoot out some AoE sky missiles. AoE circles will appear on the ground, and you can simply just walk out of them before they land. Like I said, there's really nothing to this side boss, so Zugi should go down pretty quick. When you beat him, you will get a buff for extra health, and you'll get something called Shield Generator, which procs on you throughout the dungeon and makes you take less damage. The first real boss is the Euphotic Gatekeeper. He's going to start off with a leap and then a triple charge. The triple charge, early on in the fight, almost always happens right after the leap. You can't really block the triple charge, he's going to barrel through you and knock you over. And he's going to shoot out AoE circles in the direction of his movement. He does end up stopping pretty much where he started, so you can just stand there waiting for him to finish. Now, when he leaps, a geyser and a pangrit will spawn, and then he's going to hit somebody with a synergy called a bristle pitch. And whoever gets hit with this is going to need to place this on that geyser. It'll instantly kill that pangrit and get rid of the geyser as well. As the tank, you're going to want to hold the boss next to where he leaps. It makes it easier for the DDs and the healer to drop the synergy on the geyser if you're always next to him. Now, if there's no geyser when you have the bristle pitch, the person who has it is going to need to drop it somewhere on the map, hopefully on the outskirts. The bristle pitch will leave a giant AoE wherever it was dropped. It'll eventually go away, but it takes a while. Also regarding the bristle pitch, if you get it as the tank, it means everyone in your group is dead. But you already knew that because it was probably your fault. Regarding the pangrids that spawn, they should be taunted if they aren't killed right away with the bristle pitch. They do some bat sonar looking attack and also a front cone attack, and it's best to keep those off your group and facing you. The boss has a Dragon Ball style after image that you just saw there. When he does the after image, the image will explode, sending AoEs everywhere that your DDs should block. Almost every time, but not every time, right after he does the after image, he'll follow it up with a heavy attack. So as the tank, you should just keep blocking anyway, as you can see right there. That's it for the mechanics here, so let's just speed this up until the end of the fight. The next optional boss is Zivian. It's like Vivian, but with an X, Z, and a Y. It's like a 2022 thing, I guess. Zivian has that standard boss frontal colonial attack. Just face it away, like usual, and block. He also does this really cool exorcist-style flame AoE, where he spins his head in circles and shoots fire everywhere. You can ignore it, because if you're going to go out, you might as well go out in a blaze. Actually, if you die on this boss, your tank card's going to be revoked, so... Probably don't stand in the fire. Wait, what the hell was that? This guy is the most acrobatic Dwemer guy ever. We should start a fan club for him. That was insane. How acrobatic. Let's watch that again in slow-mo. Perfect 10. Anyway, when you beat this boss, you get a couple thousand Magicka, and you also get this really lame ability to activate the laser defense systems throughout the dungeon. Probably the most useless thing ever, 
we spent like an hour trying to figure out how to make it useful, and it is completely useless. I don't think you understand. Completely useless. The second main boss is Varzanon, and he's pretty cool in concept, but the way they ended up executing how this fight goes, it just is pretty much a DPS check where you can ignore all the mechanics. Even with only one DPS and one tank, we still ignored all the mechanics. I just threw on guard, that way we can make up for the little bit of a heal check that happens when a cloud goes over Varzanon's head and he starts shooting out AoEs, as you can see right here. Guard pretty much made it so that my DD didn't need a healer to keep him alive during that phase, even when Varzanon grew to maximum size. Varzanon does this overhead smash attack, where his hands start to glow, he raises them overhead, and he smashes them down on you. This puts a line of AoE circles in your direction. These circles hurt a lot, and they'll grab you if you stand in them too long, essentially perma-stunning you until you die. In other words, don't stand in the circles. If you're really lazy, you can find the small space between the circles to stand, and if you're in just the right spot, you won't ever need to move from that spot at all for the entire fight, because we'll keep placing them in the same exact spot. Another attack he does is an AoE ground stomp. You can just stand inside this and block. It doesn't hurt that much, even when the boss is at full size. I already mentioned that death cloud that he summons above his head. It hits for six seconds and sends out one attack per second hitting all group members. This can be block casted through. If you have a healer, the healer should pretty much make up for the damage that it does. As a tank, you can just self heal through this no problem. It's really not all that concerning, especially if you do have a healer. Now, as far as the main mechanic goes, the boss is going to do this skeletal smorgasbord where he starts to glow his hands, he raises them from his sides, and some skeletons spawn of various names, types, ethnicities, genders, sexualities, and personality flaws. Chain them in so they die in the cleave, or if you want, you can make your DD struggle to kill things quickly and or survive. Now, when he does this skeletal smorgasbord, he will also summon two skeletal sacrifices. These sacrifices work a lot like Viagra, but only for Varzanon, who is conveniently made of bones. If they reach the boss, they enter him and make him longer and harder. They can be killed before they reach him, but if your DDs are good enough to do that, then they're good enough to just stack in the boss and kill him while ignoring these. If they aren't strong enough to kill them quickly, then this fight is going to take way too long, no matter what your strategy is, and you should probably just drop group and leave the party without saying a word. It's called quiet quitting, and it's all the rage these days. At least, that's what TikTok told me. Regardless, everyone should just ignore these. When Varzanon grows to maximal size, he's really hard to target, and reapplying taunt is actually very difficult. You need to look up at his center in order to redo it. Now, the other comment I have in Varzanon, he kind of looks like, you know those websites where, you know, there's a model maybe, and, you know, you can't really see her face or something like that? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So, that's Varzanon when he grows to maximal size. He pretty much hides his face. He can't really see it anymore. He doesn't want his dad to find out what he's been doing. Anyway, that's it. The third option of boss in Graven Deep is Trollzak, and for this one, you're gonna need to pull out Tutorial Block. If you're on console, put a rubber band around your controller so it holds down the left trigger, and if you're on PC, well, add-ons play 100% of the game for you anyway, so just turn on the one that blocks for you. While this is going on, text two or three loved ones letting them know how much you appreciate them, It'll make them feel special. They won't even know you did it because some video game webpage told you to. When you do beat it, you do get a buff called Remote Battery, which gives you extra stamina. And then also, when your stamina runs low, it supercharges your stamina recovery. So that's cool, I guess. This boss, on the other hand, not so much. The final boss here is Zelvrak the Unbreathing, and this one has a ton going on. In fact, two manning this, it was pretty awful to do, I don't recommend trying it. We eventually got all the mechanics figured out though, and were able to get the win. It didn't help though that there was a health bar glitch at the time of the recording, which meant that I never knew how much health that I had at various times, it looked like I was at full health the entire time even though I was clearly taking damage, and that led to a lot of wipes until we figured out, oh, there's a health bar glitch. Anyway, let's get into the actual mechanics. 
Most importantly, we have the sea orbs. The boss will summon one sea orb around 90% and another around 80%. These will persist until 50%. In the second phase of the fight, he'll summon an orb around 40% and then again around 30%. You know he's summoning an orb when he says either drown beneath the brine or take your last breath. The orbs will start descending from the ceiling after they're summoned. They make a very distinct sound when they're dropping. If an orb reaches the ground, it wipes the entire group. Someone will need to be responsible for hitting the orb before that happens. The orbs can be hit by light attacks or ranged damage attacks. Crushing Shock and Inner Fire work well for you as the tank, since you probably don't want to drop block to light attack with an Ice Staff. Unfortunately, indirect damage attacks such as ground-based dots will not work, and neither will ranged traps such as Lightweight Beast Trap or Fire Rune. When an orb is hit, it will begin rising back up to the ceiling. As soon as it reaches its maximum height, it will start dropping again. That means if you hit it early, you'll have to hit it again sooner because it won't have to rise as far, but if you wait too long, you risk missing it and wiping the group. Depending on where the orb was hit in its descent, you'll have between 10 and 20 seconds before it hits the ground. Although a healer can be assigned this role, I do recommend learning it as the tank, because you will be responsible for hitting some orbs in the hard mode. Another very important mechanic for you to pay attention to as the tank is the frontal tracking cone, Necrotic Wave. The boss follows you around with a conal AoE that strikes when it reaches maximum length. Don't swing this into your group and make sure you learn the timing on this attack as soon as possible so you can roll dodge it, because it hurts a lot, and if it hits you, it puts a large dot on you called Necrotic Remnant. After it hits, a shade version of the boss will spawn exactly where the boss was standing, and it will be facing the exact same direction the attack went out. The next time the attack starts, the shade will put out a cone in the same spot it hit last time, while the bosses will still track you like it did before. Then, another shade will spawn, this keeps happening throughout the fight and does not reset at 50%. The shades never appear to go away. So your best strategy is to stand in the same general spot the whole fight so cones never get placed so they're facing the rest of the group. At 50% you get teleported to the upside down and your job is to run around collecting these ghost dudes. Now, while you're collecting the ghost dudes, you'll be taking damage and the ghosts heal you and they make you faster to make it easier to collect other ghosts. Now, there'll be fractured souls flying into the center here. And what you can do, you can throw down some AoEs and you can run around light attacking them so that they don't reach the center. If you kill enough of them, or in other words, very few of them reach that center circle, when the mechanic ends, you're going to get a flesh Atronach that is a lot smaller and weaker than if a lot of them reach the center. So you'll see that me and the other guy in my group did a great job here because we're gonna get a little itty bitty flesh atronach they can't really do a whole lot and he's super cute and adorable and has very little health compared to the fully buffed flesh atro that you could get another mechanic is the look away mechanic you'll get a little skull icon above your head and the boss will start glowing once he's done glowing he's gonna send out a shock wave that'll place a big dot on you and make you run away in fear that you can't break free of the attack only hits your character if it's facing his direction, however, so just turn your character away, not your camera, your actual character, and he won't get hit by it. As the tank, you should also verbally call out look away, or whatever your safe word is, to the rest of the group so they know it's coming too. What? You didn't come prepared with a safe word? You're in a dungeon. You need a safe word. Zalvarak also has an ability called Sunder Soul. This won't hit the tank unless everyone else is dead, or if you lose aggro at the exact wrong time and have really bad luck. But the boss will split somebody's soul from their body, they'll get a blue debuff on their bar with a short countdown timer. When it ends, they'll start taking damage that cannot be healed through. Their soul will appear on the opposite end of the arena, and they'll need to run through it to reclaim the soul. Again, you shouldn't get this as the tank unless everyone else is dead, in which case it's probably going to be a wipe anyway, but that's okay, it's important to know the mechanics anyway. Now what you're seeing here is the four Zelvrak split phase that happens at both 75% and 25%. He splits into four shades placed on the pads in the corners of the arena. While split, approximately every four seconds, each shade will start channeling an AoE ability that hits everyone in the group for big damage. And the channel time is very short, it only looks about one second long, but it can be interrupted in that window. Even if no interrupts are gotten, everyone can survive by blocking. If a DD or healer gets hit by two at the same time without blocking, they'll probably die, so blocking is important. 
you can do some strategies where everyone grabs a pad and gets an interrupt, but I don't find it really necessary unless you're on hard mode. One thing that we did differently since we were two manning this is that we left up the flesh atro until we killed three of the shades in the split phase. Normally, you would focus down the flesh atro before even pushing the split phase, but with two people, it ended up being way harder to wait that long and deal with all of Zalvarak's mechanics. So we pushed Zalvarak to the split, then took care of the flesh atro. One more note about the flesh atro, if you get the big version of him, he hits a lot harder and he does this big ground AoE. We didn't have to worry about that because we got the little itty bitty one. All right, once all four shades are down, it should be a pretty easy execute because the boss does the same mechanics that he's been doing for the whole fight, so there's nothing new. As we watch the execute, I want to talk about the final thing that the boss does that I haven't had time to cover yet, and that is ability steal. The boss will target one person in the group and adopt one of that person's abilities depending on what class they are. If it's a necromancer, he'll summon blast bones. If a templar, he'll put these annoying nova ultimates out. With a Nightblade, he'll put out the Crippling Grasp dot on everyone. That can be purged. If it's a DK, he'll use Inferno to send out AoEs that can be healed through by the healer. If it's a Warden, the boss will put out Ice AoEs. And if it's a Sorcerer, the boss will start zapping everyone with the Lightning Execute. The Lightning will also leave AoEs on the ground that you can sidestep. Alright, I think I covered everything. Now watch me be dead during Execute because my health bar is glitched and I don't know that I'm dying. There it is. I hope you enjoyed this two-man video where I taught you the tank mechanics for Veteran Graven Deep. If you did, please leave a comment, hit the like button, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe.